Hello everyone and welcome back to the Oxford Vapors YouTube channel. I'm Taylor and today we're going to be going through a few tips for those of you who are new to vaping and are struggling with a couple of things about it. These aren't in any particular order, they're just some useful tips that I've picked up over the many years I've been vaping and something that will hopefully help you too. So first up is opening bottles. Now this may sound like an easy thing to do, but if you've ever tried to open anything from a nick, nick shot, a little nick shot bottle right up to a 100ml bottle, you can find that sometimes it is a little bit tricky. And there is a technique to every single one that will definitely help you to open your bottles easier and without any mess. For 50 and 100ml bottles, it's a technique I've always called the tin opener technique. And what this involves is using the lid of the bottle itself, taking the lid off, holding it up to the bottom of the spout of the bottle, gripping it, and then spinning the bottle so that it will then pop the lid off and then you can open the bottle no problem. This just prevents the spout of the bottle pinging off somewhere if you try and open it with just brute force, it's, it's a little bit more controlled and you're less likely for it to slip out of your hands when you're doing it or spill any liquid. With 10ml bottles, this is more so for nick shots. There's no real need to open pre-mixed bottles of e-liquid, you'll never really need to unless you're refilling them with something else. Um, but for 10ml bottles, what you do is take the lid of the bottle all the way off, then put the lid back on and give it about a quarter turn, grip both and bend them down. And what this does, it uses the thread of the lid that catches the spout of the bottle and just levers gently the spout off of the bottle. And if you've done it right, the spout will end up wedged in the lid. So when you put the lid back on, the spout is reapplied. And just a quick side note on bottles, especially with the 50s and 100s, when you put the spout back on, when you've put your nick shots in or whatever you needed to do, make sure that you run your thumbs around the whole of the lid to make sure it's entirely clicked down, because if it's not, it's likely to come off when you squeeze it to put juice into your tank or anything. And if that lid comes off, your juice is going everywhere. Next up is how to properly prime a coil. Now this is quite an important tip really because it saves you burning out your coils prematurely and obviously for money reasons you want to make your coils last as long as they possibly can so you don't have to replace them every five minutes. So the correct way to do this is get your coil and your juice and then any exposed cotton that you can see across the coil make sure that you paint some e-liquid onto it. So what I mean is don't flood the coil with liquid just a small amount where you can see it being absorbed into the cotton and that includes the inside and the outside so the outside is easy you can see them you just paint it on the inside what I would recommend is three drops at intervals so drop twist drop twist drop and then to stop the juice just falling out of the bottom turn the coil on its side and then spin it within your fingers like that and then what it will do is it will coat all of the inside then what you're going to want to do is put the coil into the tank and fill the tank up. And once you've done that, what you're going to want to do is shut the airflow completely off, assuming you have adjustable airflow, and then take five good long puffs on your tank in order to create a vacuum which just draws the liquid through that centre bit of cotton that you haven't quite covered. There's no real way of looking dignified when you do this. Uh, everyone looks a bit silly, but it's worth doing. And after that, you're gonna to wanna to leave your tank just to sit upright for about 10 minutes, just to ensure that it is completely soaked and there's no chance of you burning that coil. And then when you start to use the tank, always use it on the minimum recommended wattage that the coil states. And then after about an hour of usage, you can work it up to whatever you prefer. Next up, we have how to store your e-liquid. Now this might seem silly and very obvious, but there are some small tips that I've picked up over the years that will just make your e-liquid last that little bit longer. Obviously, it does have a sell-by date. That's not so relevant. It's more when it has the nicotine in it 
the, the nicotine can oxidize and go a sort of orangey browny color, which you may have noticed. The whole premise of storing e-liquid is keep it out of extreme temperatures. So that includes cold and heat. This is because it changes the viscosity of the liquid. So in cold, it becomes very thick and viscous, almost like a gel. And then in heat, it becomes very thin and watery. Now, neither are good for your tank. If it's a high VG you're using and the juice is too thin, your coil will intake more juice than it needs to and it's likely to leak, especially if it's, if it's really warm and really thin. Uh, because it's more watery, it will find any little crack or crevice that you may have and it will just leak everywhere. And the reverse is true for when it's cold. So if you're putting your juice into your tank and it's really thick when it's cold, your coil won't be able to absorb the juice at the same rate as it normally would and so if you're using your vapors normal you may dry your coil out because your coil cannot intake the juice at the same rate because it's too thick and if you continue to use your vape with a dry coil you will burn your coil so just make sure to keep your e-liquid in a cool dry place somewhere that's always roughly room temperature keep it out of direct sunlight don't leave it in your car especially in winter or summer when the temperatures are extreme for what I said a minute ago. And that should just prevent your e-liquid from A, ruining your coil and B, tasting a bit horrible. Next up is a bit of a strange one and one that a lot of people may not have encountered or not known that there was a name for it. It's called Vapor's Tongue and what it is is when you've used the same juice for a long time, or not even a long time, when you're using the same juice and you suddenly just can't taste it anymore. Now, like I said, this normally happens when you've been using the same flavor over and over for a long time and you just get used to it and it doesn't really taste of anything anymore. This can be really disappointing to people who think they finally found a flavor they really like and suddenly it tastes of nothing. But usually there's quite an easy fix. Normally changing your juice quite drastically will sort of reignite the taste of the previous juice. There's one that we used to recommend to people called Phoenix Tears from Zeus Juice, which is a spearmint menthol. Now we totally understand that this is not everyone's cup of tea, and even some of the people we recommended it to weren't really hot on the idea. But the reason we did it is because we found that that juice was the best at curing vapor's tongue. So people would use it even for a day or a few days, and would go back to their original flavour and be able to taste it perfectly again. So if you have encountered that, maybe try something, if you're not really hot on just menthol, then try something fruity and menthol, or if you're a dessert user, use a fruit. Use something completely different for a little while, and hopefully that should bring back the taste of your previous juice. Now the final little tip and trick is one that I think we've all been guilty of at one point, and it's chain vaping. Now what this means is taking multiple puffs one after another in quick succession. Now this isn't very advisable because basically your coil can't keep up with you. It can't intake juice quickly enough to replace what you're using if you're using it constantly. So the best way to avoid this is to take one to three puffs and then stop for a minute or so. Allow the juice to be replenished in your coil and then do it again. It won't happen all the time. I always have, when I say this to people, I always have people go, well, that's never happened to me, but it does happen and it does happen to a lot of people. And so if you can get in the habit of not chain vaping, then it will never occur to be a problem for you. So they were just some tips and tricks for people who may not have been vaping that long and may have encountered some of these things. Hopefully this will help you on your vaping journey and just rectify a few of those little issues. But I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. But with that said, I've been Taylor, this is Oxford Vapors, and we'll see you very soon.